Hey, it's time for week two of the course on Old Testament Introduction or Old Testament Survey. This week we're going to talk to you about the ancient Eastern context. Context is everything, isn't it? My wife has never seen the Star Wars movies. So the first time I use a reference, may the force be with you, or the force is strong with this one, um, she didn't quite understand that. You see, you kind of have to be privy to uh, the inside of the inside joke when you know things like that. If I make a reference to a movie, I have to make sure the person I'm talking to gets the reference. Um, the thing about the Bible is, especially Old Testament, there's some context that we've lost over time. The, over the centuries, we don't know what happened. I mean, we, we you know, in a modern context, we don't know a lot about ancient, the ancient Near East about the region of Mesopotamia that the tiles, uh, the, the PowerPoint slides talk about. Uh, we don't know a lot about ancient Egypt or ancient uh, Babylon or ancient uh, Neo-Assyria, what have you. So that's one of the reasons why on the slides I have the, the introduction talking about the, the importance of rivers, the Mesopotamian region and the Nile region, excuse me, were important for the birthplaces of civilization. A lot of ancient culture came out of those areas. Uh, I gave you a map on there showing you uh, the region of what is modern-day Iraq, Syria, what have you, all the way over to modern-day Egypt where these cultures formed. Give you a bunch of slides with a bunch of dates, a bunch of names, kind of give you an idea of context. But one thing that's really important is a slide where it talks about the uh, different cultures, uh, the different empires. So Levant, I mentioned the Canaanites, I mentioned the uh, uh, Mesopotamian empires, mentioned the Sumerians, mentioned the Babylonians and the Assyrians. These two groups, along with the Egyptians, were very important, the very important empires of their day. And not only were there uh, just one Babylonian empire, but there's several. Uh, and you even have what you call the Neo-Babylonians and the Neo-Assyrians who pop up more directly in the text of the Old Testament. Uh, some dates I want you guys to remember in this class are uh, when, and you'll look these up, that way you'll know more, know when the Neo-Assyrians uh, conquered and took over the northern kingdom of Israel, which you read the book of Kings, you'll notice that Israel splits into two, Judah and Israel. I also want you to know the date, excuse me, when the Babylonians sacked or sieged Jerusalem and took over Judah and, and deported a bunch of people. And there were two deportations, two exiles there. Uh, to uh, Babylon. Um, know those dates those are very important because these two empires are the big kids on the block. See, I grew up in the time of the, uh, the Cold War with the Soviets, you know, the U.S. versus the Soviets, you know, uh, Sylvester Stallone uh, as, as Rocky versus Ivan, was a Draco, I believe it is, I Will Crush You, that guy. So there, there's another movie reference for you, you may or may not know. But these empires are very important. They, they fought over this area of land called the Levant, uh, this strip of land which is now modern-day Israel, ancient Palestine, what have you. Uh, it was, there was a road, actually, in some, in, at some point in time that led through, or an area that led through from what was ancient uh, uh, Mesopotamia, the Neo-Assyrian Empire, down to Egypt. Uh, so this land was very, very important. Being at the crossroads, uh, the Levant, ancient Israel, what have you, um, there was a lot of influence of culture and different cultures. And the exposure to the Neo-Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Egyptians, brought all these different elements into the text of the Old Testament. Uh, we see the influence of stories such as the Epic of Gilgamesh. Uh, and the, one of the first slides I give you guys is the importance of the uh, story of Atrahasis. Um, these stories influence the text of the Old Testament, especially the notion of creation we find first in Genesis. Uh, and even the story of the flood. There's a story of, of uh, Udupishtim in uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh, this fellow who survives a flood in a boat, kind of like a Noah figure. I want you guys to take note of this stuff, because remember, it's all about the context. All about the context. And see, these epics uh, were part of the people's religion, too. It gave a notion of who these people were, their origin stories. Etiology is an important word to think about. Etiology is essentially this fancy word for story of origins or how things are the way they are. Uh, kind of like with, uh, include a slide in there of Babe and Paul Bunyan, Babe the Blue Ox and Paul Bunyan, and how uh, stories were told in the Old West and uh, as the country was forming, the United States was forming, how uh, the Grand Canyon was formed, how... Paul Bunyan drug his axe and formed the Grand Canyon and how 
you know, Paul Bunyan and Abe were playing, and it formed all the Great Lakes of the of Minnesota in the Northwest. Um, these stories are stories of origins. Uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh, Atrahasis, these stories are stories of origins. The story of Genesis 1, Genesis 2, you know, the primeval history, Genesis 1 through 11, these are stories of origins. They may not have their root in history, uh, literal history like we think in a modern sense. They may not have their root in science. But they're a people's way of explaining how the world is and why the world is the way it is. Um, it also gives them insight, uh, gives us insight into the way they view their gods. Like, for example, Atrahasis talks about the gods being anthropomorphic. We also see this notion in Genesis as well. Uh, after uh, the Adam, the man, Adam, and his uh, woman, his Eve, uh, are walking around, they realize they've done something wrong, they've eaten the fruit. Um, we find that God was walking in the garden in Genesis. That language is a very anthropomorphic language, reminiscent of some of these ancient Near Eastern texts where the gods are anthropomorphic, human-like. Um, another notion is, is that in Atrahasis we notice that the gods are have a society. And some of that language is also in the Old Testament as well. Uh, in Genesis chapter 11, the story of uh, the Tower of Babel, which note, note the slide on the ziggurats in there in the PowerPoint. Well, getting back to uh, the notion of the society of gods, in Genesis 11, there's this phrase in verse 7. God talks to somebody and says, let us go down. Kind of the Christian version of it in some ways is God's speaking to the Trinity, but this us may have notion to the idea of a divine council that some people in ancient Israel subscribed to in some ways because of the influence of the Canaanites or the influence of the Babylonians or the influence of the Neo-Assyrians or the, maybe the Egyptians where there was a kind of council of gods. Have you, have you ever seen those uh, Clash of the Titans type Greek movies? Uh, there is a kind of a council of the gods where Zeus is kind of the chief of the gods and they sit together. Well, a lot of these ancient religions had councils of gods. Even in the Canaanites, they had a council where El is the chief deity and Baal is this other deity as well. You see, not only do we find these characters explicitly in the text, these, these religious notions, these religious gods, like Baal pops up a lot in, in Kings, especially with Elijah and the prophets of Baal on the story of Mount Carmel uh, in, in uh, Kings there. Um, we also see that there's subtext in there. Like I mentioned earlier, the Epic of Gilgamesh, uh, Utnapishtim, that, that figure is also mirrored in the story of Noah. We don't know exactly what import these stories had. It may have been that these are different stories in ancient Near East, or it could be that maybe the story of Utnapishtim influenced Noah, or maybe the story of Noah influenced Utnapishtim. We don't know. Uh, but there seems to be a lot of similarity here, maybe some borrowing, if you will. Something to think about, to, to ponder, but it is important to know this ancient Near Eastern context. i got a few slides in there I want you to pay attention to. For example, the Assyrian version of Gilgamesh little picture. Uh, notice it's in cuneiform. It's a type of lettering there. i got a uh, slide, slide 14. Is the, uh, the ancient Near Eastern religion shows a tower. It's a ziggurat that comes into importance in uh, Genesis 11. You'll see that in the Genesis slides eventually. Think about context. What context are you in? Um, as a white, middle-class male, I read the Bible a certain way. As a Southern Baptist, one from a Baptist context, I read the text of the Bible a certain way. As someone who grew up in a single-parent household without a father, I read the text of the Bible a certain way. People who live in sub-Saharan Africa may read the text in a different way. Somebody who lives in a fluent neighborhood in, in New York, in the uh, suburbs of New York City, may read the text of the Bible in a different way than me as a southerner from rural North Carolina. How does your context shape how you read the Bible? What context shaped the Bible? So there's give and take on either ends, isn't there? How we read the Bible and how ancient people who recorded the text may have been influenced by the cultures around them. It's all about the context, isn't it? It's all about the context. You know what? Whether you've seen Star Wars or not, may the Force be with you.